Before we even get to law school, we're inundated with hundreds and hundreds of horror stories about what law school's actually going to be like. We're told that we're going to have to get through hundreds of cases, read loads of textbooks, we're going to have to study in our room for hours and hours on end, and we're going to have absolutely no social life. But I'm going to tell you in this video that all of this is completely untrue. So stay tuned and let's get into it. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Gareth and I'm a law lecturer based in the UK. And before I started university, I remembered all these horror stories, all these scare tactics that were thrown at me by law lecturers and by students who wanted to tell me how difficult their law degree actually was. But having done the law degree myself now, I realised that what they told me just simply wasn't true. So in this video, I'm going to break down four different components from your law degree that you shouldn't be afraid of. So firstly, I'm going to be talking about the general difficulty of a law degree and how you shouldn't fear that. Secondly, I'm going to be talking about the general structure of your law degree in terms of your lecturers, your lectures and your seminars. And then thirdly, I'm going to be talking about your reading list and how people want to make you very, very scared of the amount of reading you have to do when in truth it's not so bad. And finally I want to talk about what happens after university and the particular prospects that you may have following your degree. So the first thing I want to talk about is the general difficulty of a law degree. Now on paper law is technically the hardest subject. I think about 10 to 12 percent of law students will graduate with a first class degree as compared to something like mathematics where about 50% of students will graduate with a first. But these numbers say very little about the substantive difficulty of a law degree itself. It says very little about how much you actually have to read, how much time you have to put into the degree to get the same results. In fact, if anything, I think that maybe math students and physics students, because they potentially have more contact hours, would actually have to put in substantially more work than you would to get a first class degree, despite there being so many more students getting a first in mathematics and other scientific based and factual based subjects. The reason why so few law students come out with a first class degree is because of the subjective nature of our degree in comparison to the very factual objective based nature of scientific and mathematical based subjects. Put another way, you can't just learn the law and write down the relevant laws and hope to get a first class degree at the end of it. You actually have to have the ability to critically analyse and think about the law and what it means in context. Now this is less of a legal skill than it is more of a reasoning skill and an ability to think outside the box. It's those law students who can understand the law at this deeper level, who can critically analyse what the academics are saying, can sort of form their own opinion about the direction of the law that are going to ultimately succeed. So be bold enough to just use your brain a little bit and just form an opinion. It doesn't require any deeper knowledge or deeper learning of the law itself. It just requires you to be an independent thinker. And that's how you get a first class degree in law. And that's the difference between the 10% who do get a first and the 90% who don't. I now want to talk very briefly about the general structure of your law degree. And specifically, I want to briefly mention about the lectures and seminars. Now, when it comes to your law degree, you are going to have very few contact hours. And the contact hours that you do have aren't going to have much of an influence on the outcome of your degree. Because when it comes to the lectures themselves, they aren't particularly useful, in all honesty. A lot of the lecturers will sort of talk about the law in a way which is very heavy and bogged down, and they don't do any sort of useful structuring of the knowledge that will help you to understand it in a more coherent manner. And so my advice when it comes to law lectures and seminars isn't really to take any notes at all. I think it'd be much better use of your time to just sit there and listen to what they have to say. You simply won't be able to keep up with what they're saying to keep notes. And so a better approach would be to either summarise everything they're saying into a simple sentence. So for every slide, you just want to summarise that into a simple sentence or simply take the pieces of information that you know are going to be critically useful for the exam. Everything else that they tell you can be found within the textbooks, so don't waste your time writing down that information. When it comes to the law lecturers, don't be afraid to contact them during their contact hours and ask them any questions or concerns that you may be having about your law degree. Now, a number of law students fear approaching their law lecturers, thinking they're some sort of ghastly, unapproachable creature that doesn't really want to help them out. And to a certain extent, this is true because law lecturers have 
lecturing and taking seminars as a sort of second aspect of their job description, with their first aspect being publishing articles, for example. But the law lecturers do want to see you succeed and they're very happy to help students who do approach them during their contact hours because your success reflects well on them and the university as much as it does reflect well on you. I now want to talk very briefly about the amount of reading that you're going to have to do as a law student. And I think this is something that a lot of law students dread. They feel like they're going to be spending all their time reading books, reading cases, reading articles, and not really having much of a social life at all. And this is something that I feared as well before I even started university, because my university thought it'd be fun to send me a list of 10 or 20 books that I should read before even starting my degree in the September of that year. Now, I'm not going to lie to you, there is a lot of reading, or at least in theory, there's a lot of reading. They do send you probably a list of 10 or 20 different cases to read every week, probably a similar amount of journal articles and a couple of chapters of your textbook. So it can seem very, very daunting. But I want to make this clear. You don't have to read it all. And in fact, if you do try to read it all, I don't think you're going to get a first class degree anyway. There's just so much material to take in that you'll overwhelm yourself with information and you won't be able to learn it in time for your exam. So instead, I recommend you being very selective with what you read. When it comes to the cases, 90% of the time, you can just find a case summary online and that's going to be sufficient. Only read the cases that are absolutely crucial and the law lecturers will usually actually point this out to you. So only read those cases that the law lecturers have said, you must read this case and just do those. When it comes to the textbooks, again, I don't think you should really be reading many of the chapters. A lot of the information that you actually need can be found in a condensed form, either within a small nutshell textbook or maybe using my website, Digestible Notes. So again, 90% of the time, discard the textbook, forget about it, it's very information dense and focus on finding already condensed pieces of information and use that as your learning resource. And finally, when it comes to journal articles, most of the time, the crucial and important piece of information can be found in the introductions and conclusions. So you don't have to spend an hour or 45 minutes reading the whole journal article and trying to pick out the relevant pieces of information. You'll be wasting your time trying to find that information when you could very quickly and easily just spend 10 minutes looking at the beginning and the end of that article and extracting exactly what you need. And finally, I want to talk a little bit about what happens after you graduate. Now, many law students still think that once they've taken on the life of a law graduate, they're going to have to pigeonhole their life into either being a solicitor or a barrister. But this simply isn't true. And I think the majority of law students never take up a career in law at all. So don't just think that once you've become a law student and you've set your life along this path of a law degree, you have to ultimately follow a career in law. Throughout your degree, you're going to have a number of opportunities to speak with solicitors and barristers about their life as a lawyer. Now, I would be wary about some of these talks. Some of the time they tell you pretty misleading information about what life is really like. They'll entice you with all the money that they get and all the fabulous events that they attend, but they won't tell you about some of the horror stories that many lawyers do face. So, when it comes to your own career, your own life plan, I would highly recommend you trying to get some of your own work experience within a solicitor's firm or a barrister's chambers and to really do your own research to see whether or not this is the life for you. At the end of the day, you want to pursue a career that you're truly passionate about. And if you get a career as a lawyer and then later find out this isn't for you, then you've just wasted a lot of time. So use your time at university to actually find out whether or not this career plan is correct. And if it's not, then fantastic. You found out early that you don't want to become a lawyer and you can find something else that makes you truly passionate. The purpose of this video then is really to ensure that you shouldn't let anyone else scare you about what a law degree actually entails. A law degree is just like any other degree. They're going to lead you into it very slowly and they're going to give you the methodical and correct approach to ensure you get a first class degree. You've got to tick all the correct boxes and cut corners where you can. Don't just read everything because the lecturers tell you to read it. Don't just write notes because everyone else is writing notes. Form your own opinion, 
form your own path and you're going to succeed. If you enjoyed this video, then you're probably also going to enjoy my masterclass in studying as a first class law student, where I break down the study tips and techniques that I use to get a first class degree. I hope you found this video useful and I shall see you in the next one. Goodbye.